Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo, Hobo Technos, Technos product review. The brand Lee Time, formerly known as Amper Time, has released a new 230 amp hour lithium drop in lead acid replacement battery for RVs, off grid backup systems, and DIY solar projects that's both physically smaller and actually lighter than their previous 200 amp hour version and comes standard with low temperature charging protection. But is it any good? Let's find out. Inside the Lee Time 230 amp hour plus is a 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery rated 230 amp hours or 2,944 watt hours with a lifespan of 4,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge. As for size and weight, it's 19 inches long by 6.7 inches wide by 9.5 inches high, and it weighs in at only 45 pounds. I was actually quite surprised by the size and weight as it's inches smaller in every dimension and weighs about the same as their 200 amp hour. Now as for the BMS inside, this is a new and improved model in the Plus, and it's designed to actually handle 200 amps both charging and discharging, that's 2,560 watts. This battery can be placed in up to a 4S 4P configuration, which stands for four in series and up to four in parallel for 51.2 volt operation up to 920 amp hours for a total of 47 kilowatt hours of power. Now that's the equivalent to power the average American home for about two days. As for the case, it's typical ABS plastic that's virtually airtight, giving it its IP65 water and dust resistance rating. And that means you can use it outdoor without fear of it shorting out. Now the word plus in the name means it has been upgraded with a better BMS that has both high and low temperature protection. We'll test this out in a bit. As for features, it does come with color documentation, a really good user manual with all kinds of pictures and descriptions. It is all in color, very easy to read. It also comes included with M8 hardware, along with these little plastic caps to cover the bolts for your safety. And it also comes with a pair of nylon carrying handles. As for the warranty, Lee Time slash Amper Time provides a five year manufacturer's warranty on this product. And of course we took the Lee Time here into my secret laboratory where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including yes, a single fisted battery capacity test. As for the results of the battery capacity test, it scored 235 amp hours out of 230, so you get a bonus of five for free. This has a 200 amp BMS. That means we should be able to pull 200 amps at least from this battery before it overheats or shuts down or anything like that. 200 amps is approximately 2,500 watts. So I do have a 4,000 watt charger inverter back here. It'll do 120 amps of charging but I could also discharge at 4,000 watts. So you should have no problem maxing out this battery. Let's give it a shot. Okay, right here is our amp meter. We are going to go ahead and turn on the inverter. And I have some various loads on the floor. I'm gonna go ahead and turn them on. All right, we're already at 300 amps. That didn't take long. And it shut down right away. That was very quick. So I noticed something different right away from other Lee Time batteries. This thing shut down right away at 300 amps. So they must have changed the BMS in here from the previous models because previous models you could pull three, four, or 500 amps for quite a while before they'd overheat and shut down. And this just self-recovered while I was talking to you. It self-recovered and came back on. Let me unplug some of this load so it doesn't go into overload again. But there we go, we're back. So let's go ahead and do that test again a little bit more slowly. So up top I'm gonna have the amps and down here I'll have my stopwatch going. Okay, 225 amps, I'm gonna start the timer. Let's see if we can at least make it a minute and if we can, we'll let it continue. Here we are coming up on five minutes at 230 amps. 
it's running it no problem. So there is a little bit of leeway in the BMS. But that also means we need to find the top end. So let's go ahead and raise it to 250 amps and run it and see if it still goes another five minutes. And no, it doesn't. As soon as it hit 250 amps, for a few seconds, it shuts down. So since it'll run at 225 for five minutes, but it won't run at 250 for a few seconds, I think we found our limit here. I'm gonna go ahead and run it an additional five minutes at 225 just to make sure that there is no overheating issues. All right, here we are on the second five minutes that this is running at 230 amps. So we're good there. That means the new and improved BMS in the lead time is actually allowing me to run 230 amps pretty much indefinitely. So it ran 10 minutes, actually going on 11 minutes. No problem, I don't feel any real heat coming out of the battery. It's not warm or anything yet. It'll probably take a lot longer to make it warm. So I say it passes that test with flying colors. Let's check and see what the surge rating is on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and surge it up and we'll find out what is its upper limit when it cuts off the BMS. All right, we're doing a surge test. Let's see. 350, okay, 350, 375, it cut off in a few seconds. Okay, it's taken 400 for a few seconds. Less than five seconds at 400 amps. At 450, it was less than a second. So I think that is the surge, about 450 amps. That seems about right. All right, so we found the surge of the BMS, 450 amps for less than one second. That's about what you expect. So I know this contraption looks like something that you'd see on Doc Brown's table, and no, I didn't build it to scale. What we got going on here is I have my 120 amp charger, this big blue thing in the background, tied in with my 10 amp charger, and then my 20 amp charger. So I got 120, 20, and 10. So a combined total of 150 amps. Now this is all I got. I can't really shove anything else into this mix. This says it will charge at 200 amps. We're gonna push 150 into it for at least five minutes just to make sure it can do at least 150. I can't test above that, but this will give us a good idea if the BMS in this can handle it. Okay, so we're starting off at 28 amps, which is my two smaller chargers. I'm gonna go ahead and kick the big one in, which is running off its own power source. And there we have it, 147 amps. Let's start the timer. While this test is running, you might think, well, why bother testing at 150 amps? Well, here's the reality. You're gonna pretty much not find any chargers on the market that run 12 volts at 150 or more amps. I don't know of any. That's usually the cutoff because you're talking, let's see how many thousand watts are going into this thing right now. Right now we're pushing 2000 watts into this battery. That's already quite a bit. And that's a lot of amps to run through cables. So I know there's some exceptions out there. There might be some 200 amp chargers out there that are gonna be thousand plus dollars, but very few of you buying this battery is ever going to charge it at 150 amps or higher. In fact, most of you are going to buy multiples of these, put them in parallel, where they're going to split the charging load anyway. So I think this is going to be a more than adequate test to show you that you can charge it at at least 150 amps. Okay, we're coming up on four minutes, but I want to show you something else. These are two OTT welding cables. These are huge cables and they're even getting a little bit warm at 150 amps. This is why you really don't wanna push more than 150 amps into these batteries anyway. You have to use crazy huge cable, and this is only a foot of cable. You can imagine that this is a run in your RV that's three, four, five, six feet long between your inverter and your battery. They're gonna get really hot. You're gonna to have to use cables like this thick to carry more than 150 amps. So we'll see here. So that side was running 105, and that side was running 103. At the shunt, we're getting 107. So as you can see, the cables are definitely getting toasty. Now these aren't dangerously hot, they're not gonna melt and cause a fire. So we're at now six minutes running 150 amps into this battery, so that's definitely a pass, definitely a good BMS. All right, so we put the lead time in the deep freezer for 15 hours to get it below freezing and just to prove to you that it is below freezing. Here we go, it is at 30 degrees. And here's your proof that the low temperature charging is working. We're gonna turn the charger on, it's hooked up to the battery, zero amps. So 
at 14.9 volts. It's not sending anything into the battery because the BMS said, nope, we're below freezing. You're not allowed to charge. So the low temperature charging protection on this battery definitely works. So what do I think about the lead time 230 amp hour plus? I think these batteries just keep getting better and better each year. I still recall my review of the 200 amp hour version of the Amper Time last year. That was just one year ago. And that one was bulkier, didn't offer low temperature protection. It had a measly 100 amp BMS inside and that cost 24 cents per watt hour. This new bigger and better model is only 20 cents per watt hour with my discount code, which we'll talk about here in a moment. That makes this battery a fantastic buy, especially since it's physically smaller than the competing 200 amp hour batteries, but you're getting 235 amp hours of usable power instead. So what's the use case for these kinds of batteries? It seems apparent that I need to explain what these batteries are for because I had some folks answer a recent poll and they didn't understand the use case for these batteries. So if you know what these batteries are for, go ahead and skip the next few minutes. If not, I'm gonna go ahead and explain it quickly. Okay, so first, it's a battery. It does what a battery does. It stores and releases electrical energy. While its chemistry is based on lithium and iron, it works virtually the same as the 150 year old technology in lead acid batteries that we all grew up with. The main difference that inside this plastic box is an actual circuit board that controls how much power can go in, how much power can come out, when it can charge, when it can discharge, how much to put into the cells, how much to lie to take out, what temperature you're allowed to charge up to and down to. That circuit board is called the BMS or battery management system and all the lithium iron phosphate batteries have them. Primary function is protect the battery and you from any damage. These batteries are primarily used in RVs, trailers, boats, van builds in place of lead acid batteries because lead acid battery is very inefficient. It's heavy, it requires regular maintenance, and it can become quite dangerous because lead acid batteries give off toxic explosive gases. That's why you have to ventilate them. If you don't ventilate them and trap that gas in a small space, light a match, boom, there it goes. It's called hydrogen, it blows up, just like the Hindenburg. And explosive gases are the last thing you wanna have in an enclosed space, especially if you're camping or sleeping in it. And with all the protections built into these batteries, if you take the battery cables and stick them together, you'll get a big spark, but then the battery will instantly shut off. So it's got all these built-in protections and it doesn't off-gas anything. And that makes these batteries actually a lot more safer than lead acid if you're gonna be in a confined space and sleeping with them. These batteries are also used for off-grid solar builds or home backup battery systems, again, in place of lead acid batteries. Now, lithium batteries can be fully discharged down to zero with no damage. Unlike lead acid batteries, where if you charge them past 50%, they take permanent damage. And that means a battery like this will have twice as much power per amp hour than your old school lead acid batteries. So this 230 amp hours is fully usable from zero to 100 where your lead acid is only 50%. Now we're currently right now at a crossroads where the effective cost of a budget brand lithium battery such as this matches or even beats a name brand lead acid battery. So once you factor in lithium batteries last 10 times as long, require no maintenance, no ventilation, are safer. It basically makes no sense at all to even consider lead acid batteries anymore for anything except for one function, and that's starter batteries in vehicles. And the reason for that is starter batteries still have that advantage of pumping hundreds of more amps into an electric motor during starting in sub-freezing conditions. However, there are already lithium iron phosphate trolling batteries coming out on the market designed to run electric motors. I'm gonna make the call right now that it's gonna be maybe one or two years tops before we have automotive grade lithium starter batteries as the norm on the market. So if you're using one of these as an RV house battery or for an off-grid solar or backup power build, how big of an inverter can you run? Each 230 amp hour plus can handle 2,500 watts of output. That means two in parallel can handle 5,000 watts. That's a heck of a lot of power. So effectively, the largest 12 volt inverters available can be powered with just a pair of these lithium batteries. The reverse is also true. If you're using an inverter charger combo, which are getting a lot more common nowadays, you can effectively charge each battery at 2,500 watts or 200 amps. So a pair in parallel could handle 400 amps of charging. Now you're never gonna find a 12 volt charger on the market that outputs 400 amps unless it's some kind of crazy multi-thousand dollar industrial model. 
So again, a pair of these batteries can handle just about anything you can throw at it. Now, if you're looking for inverters or solar controllers to pair with these kinds of batteries, I do have several models available on my product page, hobotech.tv. Product price. So this bigger, better, batter, 230 amp hour plus model is only 592 or 20 cents per watt hour when you use the link and discount code in the description of this video. In fact, Lead Time is offering a pair of discount codes that will work across the board until the end of the year for all of their products on their website. So if you're looking for a smaller or larger version of this battery, the codes will still work for that discount as well. So if you're interested in the Lead Time 230 amp hour plus battery or any of the other Lead Time batteries on the website, the link and discount code is going to be in the description of this video below. I'm also going to put a link here at the bottom of the screen that you can type in manually along with a QR code that you can scan on your mobile device in case you're watching me on TV. And I'll take you on over to the Lead Time store page where you can check out the 230 amp hour plus and the other lead time batteries. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.